Welcome back to part two of my first ever tier list video on this channel. What I wanted to do was rank every single UFC champion of all time. And that's why I split it into two videos because one video would have been way too long. So this is where we are. This is where we're set. If you haven't seen part one of this, go back and watch part one first. I also explain the criteria and how these work. So I'm not going to explain that now, but they're getting ranked into tiers. It's fairly straightforward. We're starting with Khabib Nurmagomedov, the current UFC lightweight champion, if you want to call him that, probably soon to be stripped of the belt or soon to vacate the belt. But the thing with Khabib, right, is compared to some of the other fighters in S tier, spoiler, I'm gonna go S tier for Khabib. So compared to some of the other ones there, he didn't have as many title defenses, but if you look at the strength of schedule for Khabib, if you look at the historical impact of those wins, if you look at the entertainment factor, even though he wasn't necessarily the most entertaining fighter in a traditional sense, if you just look at what he did, I think Khabib Nurmagomedov makes S tier. Let me know if you disagree with that. So should he go A tier? I think he goes S tier, somewhere up there. Next up, Brock Lesnar. So you gotta give Brock Lesnar credit for what he did, right? He beat Randy Couture with like four fights or three fights or whatever he had. So a lot of credit for that, wins the belt and then defends it twice. Once against Frank Mir, he we lost it in the past. So again, lots of credit for making the adjustments and beating him and, you know, putting the horseshoe out of his ass and beating him over the head with, as he, as he said. Um, and then he beats uh, Shane Carwin, who was just a monster at the time and survived a, a beatdown in the first round to come back and get the arm triangle. So I give Brock Lesnar a lot of credit. I think he, I think he might pop into B to be honest. For what he did, uh, especially the entertainment factor was right there. I think he's low B. I might be crazy there, but I'm, I'm going B. I think he ranks higher than all these, you know? I'm going there. Leo Machida. The Leo Machida or the Machida era wasn't necessarily an era, even though Joe Rogan said it would be. He wins the belt from Rashad Evans. Looks incredible. Uh, but then he defends the belt against Leo uh, Shogun Hua. He should have lost that fight. It was a clear victory for Shogun. And then defends it again in an immediate rematch. And then loses to Shogun. So I think, I mean, do I go D? I don't know if I can go D, can I? No, I'm going to go low C. No, can I? He's very low C or very high B. We'll see. We'll see. He might get moved. Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes for me is a S tier champion. One of the greatest welterweight champions of all time. Five title defenses in his first title reign. Two title defenses in his second title reign. And beat some of the best guys, the most notable guys in the welterweight division for the, for the time. So yeah, Matt Hughes, S tier for me. Lose the belt to George St. Pierre, uh, of course. And lost it the first time to BJ Penn. So no shame in those losses. Matt, uh, Matt Serra. Matt Serra. So... I'm going to go D tier for Matt Serra and I know I put Holly Holm in C tier, low C tier, and she didn't have any title defenses, but the thing with Matt Serra is he won the belt and then he lost it back to the same guy and got dominated. So I think he loses some points for that. Yeah, I'm going to go, going to go there. Next up, Marie Smith. Marie Smith is an important champion in some ways because he proved that strikers could beat wrestlers like Mark Coleman and he pretty much dominated that fight and he dominated by defending a lot of the takedowns making Coleman work when he had grappling situations and then once on the feet he just blasted him with leg kicks and, and strikes and, and just kind of overloaded Mark Coleman's senses. So I think Murray Smith in some ways is an important champion. He only had one title defense was against Tank Abbott. So, you know, not the greatest. And I think Tank Abbott lost by exhaustion or something like that. So yeah, one title defense. I think he slips out of uh, out of the out of the D category though. We we'll go low, low um, C because I think he's important for what he did for fighting. Here could be a really controversial one. Conor McGregor. Where do you go with Conor McGregor? So zero title defenses, almost just refused to defend his belt, it seemed. And then he, but he, he won two titles and he won the titles in incredible fashion. I think I'm going to go C with Conor. I'm going to go C. He might go t near top of C. And I know a lot of people will say, put him in D because he never defended the belt. But there is something for those two titles, I think. And he does lose a lot of points for not defending the belts. But those two title victories, Jose Allo in 14 seconds or 13 seconds. And then Eddie Alvarez in an all-time great finish and performance. I mean, I think he's got it. He doesn't make B, but yeah, I think he's got to go a little bit higher than D. And I think he's, I think he's probably high, maybe not first in the C category, but close. Next up, Dave Manet, the first ever UFC middleweight champion. And I wouldn't call him a transitional champion per se. He was the first ever champion, but in some ways he was because he wins the belt against Gil Castillo. Decent fighter for his time, but he's not blowing anybody away, you know. Then loses the belt pretty handily to Murillo Bustamante, who was a good fighter. So there's no shame in that. But I think Dave Manet, I'm not going to bump him up like I bumped up Mark Coleman because Coleman gets that because he was the first ever champion. And with Dave Manet, I'm going to leave him 
in D. He also didn't beat someone like Mark Coleman did in Dan Severn. Gil Castillo wasn't a Dan Severn. Next up, Misha Tate. She beats Holly Holm for the 135 pound belt in incredible fashion and something that will be remembered for a long time but I don't think I can put her into C because she has no title defences and she lost really badly to Amanda Nunes and there's no shame in losing to Amanda Nunes and a win against Holly Holm was good but um, I can't go any further up I'm gonna go down here somewhere Stipe Miocic so here's an interesting one so Stipe Miocic is the greatest heavyweight champion of all time but does he make it into S tier with the rest of these guys I mean you could argue like Khabib he didn't have that many title defences so he has four so he has one more than Habib but some of them like Alistair Overeem and Junior Dos Santos good title defences but I think both guys were past their best by the time that he beat them so does he go high A Stipe Miocic does he go high A can he get the S I think I'm gonna leave him an A might be a little bit controversial we have Frank Mir who was a champion a long time ago he beat Tim Sylvia back at UFC 48 broke his arm in, in a fight you probably remember you probably see in highlights where Herb Dean notices that his forearm got snapped from an arm bar and nobody noticed but Herb Dean and the fight was stopped but then um, couldn't defend the belt because he got into a horrific car accident and it looked like his career might have been over but then he eventually came back he did then win the interim belt but of course we're not talking about that so no title defenses and a good win against a good champion but i still think we're gonna go d for frank Mir. nico montano similar to jermaine the randomy in some ways uh, she never defended the belt and yeah i think she's very far down the totem pole uh, Rose Nami Hunes, she had a good reign in terms of who she beat, right? She beat Joanna and Jacek, huge upset, and then beat her in a rematch. Another, I think, was still probably an upset at the time. So I think that definitely bumps her up to C, probably mid C's, but then she didn't beat anyone after that. Just not enough work there from Rose Nami Hunes and loses the belt uh, pretty early. Amanda Nunes, we have another S tier, two weight world champion. The interesting thing about her, though, is she did defend the belt at 145 and 135, which is impressive 145 division isn't necessarily a division really but she beat cyborg for the belt defends it twice felicia spencer and megan anderson I give her a lot of credit for the cyborg win she beats amisha tate for the belt ronda rousey for the belt valentina shevchenko raquel pennington holly holm jermaine durandamy at bantamweight extremely impressive clearly is an s tier champion right now next up pat militich the first ever ufc welterweight champion plenty of title defenses for pat militich he beat mikey burnett for the belt that was a extremely controversial decision close fight i thought mikey burnett won it but it was a terrible fight they were just literally they were wedging each other through the whole thing the grabbing shorts wasn't banned at the time this was actually the fight that i think got the technique banned but they were just grabbing each other's shorts and you saw way too much ass way too much military ass um but he had four title defenses the only problem was the guys who we beat george patino or jorge i think it's george who i think gave charles Oliveira his black belt but anyway andre pedineras famous coach but wasn't a, he wasn't much of a, a fighter in the UFC anyway and he was very inexperienced John Alessio that was a, a decent win and Kenshi Yamamoto so the guys he beat weren't phenomenal the strength of opposition isn't there but he has four title defenses I think he's B next up BJ Penn one of the more revered fighters in UFC history and one of the best remembered UFC lightweight champions he made the UFC lightweight division when nobody was really paying attention because if you remember the UFC kind of got rid of the lightweights after Jens Pulver left and Kao Luno and BJ Penn fought to a draw eventually they brought it back with Sean Shirk Sean Shirk then tested positive for PEDs then they had the fight with BJ Penn and Joe Stevenson where BJ Penn dominated Joe Stevenson to win the vacant belt then he goes on to defeat Sean Shirk fights Kenny Florian beats him and then beats Diego Sanchez in like really really impressive performances looks pretty much unbeatable and then Frank Yeager comes along and beats him in a huge upset but for what he did at the time even though he doesn't have that many title defenses that definitely excludes him from S tier I think he slightly ranks above the likes of your Frank Yeager slightly even though he lost to him twice I think for what he did for what he did for the division the historical impact those performances I think he's low A high B so we're gonna go low A for BJ Penn as a champion only three title defenses I understand that but I think for his historical impact i think he's up there we have another lightweight champion in anthony pettis one title defense against gilbert melendez a lovely guillotine of course he wins the belt against benson henderson in it wasn't really an upset but in the way that he did it he arm bars benson henderson and benson henderson was notoriously difficult to submit back in the day that was extremely impressive he of course went onto the wheaties box how he was very very famous at the time he looked like a star in the making and he did become a star but not quite the star that he hoped he would become next up quinton rampage jackson he beats chuck liddell for the like heavyweight belt 
in a hugely consequential finish and fight for the UFC kind of knocked Chuck their biggest star at the time off his perch and then he goes on to beat Dan Henderson who was coming across as the two weight world champion in pride middleweight and light heavyweight although they weren't technically called that and then he beats him and then he loses the belt to Forrest Griffin in a bit of a shock or a, a huge shock I should say so one tile defense a win over a legend so I think he ranks somewhere in C Again, lack of work. Next up, we have Randy Couture, an absolute legend of the game, a legend, a legendary champion who is a three-time champion, a heavyweight, two-time champion, a light heavyweight. Wins it originally back in the day against Marie Smith, who proved he could beat wrestlers but couldn't beat Randy Couture because Couture was just that good. Vacates it, eventually comes back, beats Pedro Hizo, beats Kevin Randleman for the belt, then beats Pedro Hizo twice. One of them was just an all-time great fight, very, very close. And then he loses the belt to Josh Barnett. Barnett, of course, taking PEDs. He was stripped, but Randy didn't get the belt back. But he did eventually when he beat yes tim sylvia comes back to beat tim sylvia then he beats gabriel gonzaga in two like a, a double a heavyweight which was just incredible at the time because tim sylvia was this giant beast and randy couture was undersized comes back and beats him and he's an old man and then he beats gabriel gonzaga who just knocked out crow cop by head kick then he goes down to light heavyweight in the midst of kind of all that and he wins the interim belt against chuck liddell he unifies it then by beating tito ortiz and then he gives the belt of vitor belfort in very very controversial fashion we spoke about it in the last video but then he wins a rematch eventually he does lose it against Chuck Liddell but I think even looking at his heavyweight resume he probably makes A tier throw on his light heavyweight resume I think he makes S tier next up we have Rashad Evans look like a really promising champion he beats Forrest Griffin dominates him but then couldn't defend the belt loses in devastating fashion even worse than he beat Forrest Griffin to Leo Machida who didn't turn out again to be a great champion at light heavyweight so I think unfortunately for Rashad Evans he's somewhere down there next up Rico Rodriguez who won the heavyweight belt against Randy Couture actually because when Josh Barnett lost the belt when he tested positive for PEDs Rico fought Randy for the vacant title Rico won he dominated that fight but then he loses the belt to Tim Sylvia zero title defenses even though he beat a legend I think he could probably sneak him into lower C but uh, I can't quite uh, Rich Franklin at middleweight it looked like he was going to be extremely dominant at middleweight and he was for a time he wins the belt against Evan Tanner dominates that fight just Barks and a quarry. Unbelievable finish. And then just puts an all time, like, all time great beat down on David Loazu and changed David Loazu for the worst. But then he loses to Anderson Silva. So I think with Rich Franklin, can't quite get him to be, even though he was a good champion. I think he's in a, he's in C category. Next up, Luke Rockhold wins the belt against Chris Weidman, who was on a bit of a tear. He looked dominant, but then he couldn't defend the belt. He loses it against Michael Bisbing in insane fashion. So I gotta go for Luke Rockhold. Ronda Rousey. So Ronda Rousey as a champion. Let's talk about her as a champion. Does she go S? I know a lot of people will say no because she lost to Holly Holm and you know all that. But what she did, six title defenses, absolutely historic. I'm leaving her an S. I'm sorry. I, I know I'm going to get a little bit of hate for that. But I got to I gotta put her an S as a champion. Remember, we're not talking about what happened after she lost the belt. Yes, she lost the belt to Holly Holm and looked bad in doing it. But six title defenses. Misha Tate was a legitimate win. Liz Carmouche. Uh, Sarah McMahon. Alexis Davis. Kat Sangano was a good win. Uh, Betch Correa. Probably the worst win in her resume. But still, there's a lot of um, hate for Ronda Rousey out there. And I get it. She was definitely not as good as she was hyped up to be. But I think as a champion, she probably is S tier for what she did as a champion. I hate putting Ronda Rousey above these guys. Like, I mean, I know it's it's weird, but think about the criteria, guys. Think about the criteria, what I'm trying to do here. Mauricio Shogun, who a champion at light heavyweight, should have been more in the UFC. Unfortunately, he arrived and he was already beat up from pride. His knees were jacked. He could barely walk. It's a bit of hyperbole, but you know what I mean. But he wins the belt against Leo Machida. Probably should have won it in their prior fight, but he does eventually win it. Then gets dominated by John Jones. Unfortunately, Mauricio, you can't go any higher than there for me. Sean Shirk, the second UFC lightweight champion. Of course, he revived the, the division when the UFC brought it back. He had a really good victory to win the belt over Kenny Florian. He showed that he would have been a force at the weight class. We knew that. And then he proved it against Hermes Franke. And he got hurt against Hermes Franke a few times. And Hermes Franke is a is a dirtbag 
just Google them. But then, speaking of dirtbags, it was the dirtiest fight in UFC history in ways because both guys tested positive for PEDs afterwards. Sean Shirk was stripped and he never won the belt back. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with D for Sean Shirk. I know he has one title defense, but that title defense is tainted forever. And I know he disputed it. And to be honest, in USADA era UFC, he may have gotten away with what happened because there did seem to be a tainted supplement, apparently designed to drink that the UFC actually had a share, like a stake in. Dana White and the Fertitta brothers had a stake in Zions. The thing that was found in Sean Shirk's system was found in one of those supplements, which is, you know, and then the UFC didn't say anything, I don't think. But yeah, it is what it is. Next up, we have Frank Shamrock. I mean, Frank Shamrock, at the time when he was champion, he was the greatest champion in UFC history by a stretch. And he was, he was trending towards potentially being an S-tier champion. And I'd love to put him in S tier because his title reign was unbelievable. But I think he goes high A tier just because he vacated the belt. And if he had one or two more title wins, I think he would have gone higher. I do. I think he would have gone higher. But you look at who we beat. So we beat Kevin Jackson, which was, uh, that's, a, that's a fine win. That's who we won, uh, who we beat to win the, the belt. But then he beats Igor Zavinovich. Then he beats Jeremy Horn, John Lober, which was actually revenge because John Lober had beat him. And then he beats T. Ortiz. And the T. Ortiz fight at UFC 22, it's one of the only fights from like early UFC that I will say holds up as being a great fight it was phenomenal but I just wish he stuck around and he was the champion for a little bit longer I think he would have made it to S tier I really do next up we have Valentina Shevchenko yeah, very dominant at our weight class the problem with Valentina is kind of the problem that Amanda Nunes has in both divisions but in particular the featherweight division there's not that many girls who can challenge her right now she has four title defenses but not one of those title defenses we're competitive. Now, she beat Joanna and Jacek, which is a legitimate win. I think with the level of competition that she's fighting and beating, I think she needs a couple more wins to make it to eight here. I hope you get what I mean. As a champion, like Jessica I, it was never going to happen. Just never going to happen. Liz Carmouche thought, maybe we thought she could have done something, but no. Caitlin Chukagian, never going to happen. Jennifer Maya, never going to happen. She just has a problem there. I just can't put, I have to put her in B. I really do. Uh, George St. Pierre, Greatest welterweight champion of all time. Uh, let's put him right up there and we'll, I don't know, we'll see where he goes. George St. What, what can be said about George St. Pierre? He had nine title defenses in his second reign as champion. In his first reign as champion, he had no title defenses because he lost to Matt Serra. Comes back though, wins a couple of fights and he gets that, uh, gets that belt back. But he beats John Fitch, BJ Penn, Thiago Alves, Dan Hardy, Josh Koscheck, Jake Shields, Carlos Condit, Nick Diaz, Johnny Hendricks. No drug issues, barely any controversies. The only real controversy, I guess, was the Johnny Hendricks fight where maybe he, he could have lost that one. But George St. Pierre is S tier, no doubt. No doubt. Tim Sylvia. Tim Sylvia as a heavyweight champion was a good heavyweight champion in my opinion. I mean, he gets a bad rap, okay? So he, he wins the belt, he beats Rico Rodriguez, has one defense of the belt, but then tested positive for, for PEDs, that was the problem with him. Then he wins the belt back by beating Andre Arlovsky after they fought for a interim belt. And then he has two title defenses against Andre Arlovsky and Jeff Monson. So I think Tim Sylvia is like a B tier champion, like lower B tier champion. Tio Ortiz, Tio Ortiz has a, had a really good light heavyweight run. Five title defenses. I think he's similar to Frank, uh, Frank Shamrock, a similar position. He had five title defenses, lost to him. Some of his wins were Maybe not quite as good, particularly Ken Shamrock at the time when he beat Ken Shamrock at UFC 40. Shamrock was way past his prime. But wins are over Yuki Kondo, Evan Tanner, Elvis uh, Sinovich. And uh, yeah, Vladimir Matyshenko. Some of the fights were okay. Some of the fights were very, very impressive. But I think I think he belongs up there somewhere. Yeah. Next up we have Kamaru Usman. Kamaru Usman so far has been a really good champion. Really good champion. Of course, wins the belt against Tyron Woodley in a... A good performance against a dominant welterweight champion. Then he defends the belt against Colby Covington in an excellent fight. Then Jorge Masvidal in an okay fight. And then Gilbert Bournes in a, a fight where he showed a lot of evolution. He showed the jab. He showed the work that he was doing with Trevor Whitman. I think he's close to breaking uh, high up that B tier. But I think as a champion so far, I think he sits nicely as a, as a, yeah, as a, as a low B. Valentina Shevchenko. Did I just do Valentina Shevchenko? I did. She's there twice. 
Ah, uh, look there, there's the problem. We have pulled Valentina Shevchenko in twice. Anyways, moving on. Next up, Cain Velasquez. Cain Velasquez could have been an S-tier world champion for sure. Where do you put Cain Velasquez now? He won the belt twice, no title defenses in the first one. Loses it to Junior De Santos, but then puts a beat down on him. Puts a beat down on the rematch on him. Beats Antonio Silva. <sighs> low B for Cain Velasquez he was excellent for what he was two time champion and beat the guy who beat him and beat the guy who beat him twice and put like a world class beat down and changed him forever I think low B for Cain Velasquez sneaking into C because no low B for Cain Velasquez next up we have Alexander Volkanovsky the incumbent at 145 pounds he hasn't done a whole lot just yet he beats Max Holloway twice and both were quite close I can't go too much higher than C I mean beating Max Holloway for how good he was, very, very good. But I think mid somewhere mid C for uh, Alexander Volkanovsky right now. Next up, we have Chris Weidman, beats Anderson Silva, the greatest ever middleweight champion. And then has three title defenses, beats Anderson the second time as well. Of course, horrific leg break, but then beats Leon Machida and Vitor Belfort. Unfortunately, those two title defenses aren't great because Vitor and Leo well Leo was was definitely viable at that time I think Weidman was a, a fairly good champion I think he gets a lot of credit for beating Anderson so I think he's got to go you know somewhere low to mid B we'll put him there for now Wiley Zhang she beats Jessica Andrade dominates her and an all-time great performance against Joanny and Jacek I don't think she can go any higher than C right now somewhere around here deserves a lot of credit for for beating Joanna and Jacek in the way that she did but a bit more work has to be done to move up the tiers. Next up, Fabricio Verdum, a heavyweight. He beats Cain Velasquez, who, as you can see, I've rated pretty highly, even though he didn't have too many title defenses. So he gets a lot of credit for that. But then with Fabricio, he, I mean, he wins the interim belt and then he unifies against Cain Velasquez. But then he loses the belt to Stipe Miocic straight away, gets finished. So technically no title defenses, but beats a really good guy. I think, again, high C for, I think low C for Verdum. Next up is Robert Whitaker. Crazy turnaround for Robert Whitaker coming up from welterweight to middleweight. Of course he wins the interim belt against Yoel Romero and then eventually was promoted to the championship at full champion status after GSP vacated the belt. So I guess like he wins the belt against Yoel Romero but at some points I guess, I guess gets taken away for not unifying the belts. And then he loses it to Adesanya you know pretty devastating fashion. So no title defenses and didn't beat the champion. I'm sorry I love Bobby Nux. Someone called me Bobby Nux in a live chat on MMA on point uh, a couple of weeks ago and I love it but uh a Robbie Nux but unfortunately he's gotta go D he's gotta go D I'm sorry one of the more dominant champions at welterweight in welterweight history in Tyron Woodley three title defenses in total one draw with Stephen Thompson and he beat Robbie Lawler for the belt and finished him I think Tyron Woodley for what he did I think ranks high B. I don't think he quite makes it to an A tier champion, but I think high B. Next up, Peter Yan. He wins the belt by beating Jose Aldo. And then, silly, just completely silly, he loses the belt. So he goes higher, in my opinion, than Aljamain Sterling, but I can't put him any higher than that because he has no title defenses and didn't beat the champion and didn't be a replacement. Like, if he went in there and he beat Aljamain, for the belt at the first time or if you won this fight here i think you'd definitely be just bumping into c a little bit and valentina shevchenko we already have her in b so there we go that is our our list so what i'm going to do as quickly as possible is i'm going to rearrange these to go where i think they should be so in each tier so let's start with s tier who's the greatest champion of all time i think gsp maybe anderson now i'm gonna go gsp first as a champion two-time champion uh, and beat like generations of fighters or maybe John Jones. I'm gonna bring John Jones down a little bit because of the, uh, the you know the tainted supplements, <laughs> or just taking shit. We have Amanda up a little bit. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna bring Randy up a bit. Could be up there. It could be up here. Aldo. Hmm. Matthews. We'll Ronda Rousey at the end. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. We we'll go with that. In the A tier category, I'm gonna go Steve A. I think Steve A is is right up there. I think. Chuck Liddell next, I think Frank next, I think after that we'll go Max, maybe BJ, Cormier there, I think somewhere like that, I think that looks good. Next up in the B tier category, I'll probably leave Valentina first because I think she is like hovering between A and B, I just think the opposition, she couldn't get into the A tier category because of the opposition. Out of all these here, I would bump up, not too much, Henan Burrell was a good champion, I think he goes above. Tyron Woodley, yeah, Jens Pulver, hmm, this is tough, this is tough, 
I'm, I'm not doing anything really here, am I? I'm just kind of leaving them where they are. I'm happy with that. Not really, but I'm happy with that. And next up in this category, where do we go? So we have, yeah, I think Connor should be kind of near the top. I think what he did, I know no tile defenses, so yeah, but I mean, I think these are all fairly similar. You can bring up Rose a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tough. <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, and then these, um, I'm just going to say who is, like right now we're going to have to go, we have to go Aljo. Again, I'm I'm not making a comment on what happened with Aljo, but just the circumstances, DQ, win the belt by DQ, he kind of has to be last, right? But yeah, Montano last, aside from that, yeah, or can you? No, nah, yeah, we'll go with that. Vitor has to be, yeah, yeah. There or thereabouts, I think it's fine. They're not in exact order, I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> tough. It's tough, it's tough. We're gonna go with that. Finished. Done. If you haven't watched part one, what are you doing? Go back and watch part one. Let me know if you want to see any more of these. Uh, preferably less uh, time-consuming ones. This one was very long. But if you can think of any other good categories, let me know and I'll maybe do it. But yeah, like, subscribe.